So we're in part two of the video on making a gift. And last time I got the basic board planed down to the thickness that I wanted. It was that beautiful black walnut. And so now we're ready to actually do some finer cutting with it. I don't actually have a table saw. I only have a jigsaw and I have a circular saw. And frankly, those aren't gonna get it done because, well, the circular saw is for rough cutting. And the jigsaw, as you know, if, you, if you've used a jigsaw at all, you know, you can get some deflection in the, the blade. And for what I'm making, I can't have that. That would look pretty bad. It would look like pretty bad craftsmanship. And so uh, I've enlisted the help of m one of my neighbors who happens to have a table saw. He actually does quite a bit of woodwork himself. And so um, he's agreed to help me out with that. So I'll try to get a little bit of a snippet of that in here as well. But first, I want to show you what it is that I'm making and show you the basic plans for it. And uh, yeah, then we'll get into it. All right, so here is the plan for what I'm actually making. This is, if you can't tell, a picture frame. And it's actually not going to have a picture, like a photograph inside of it. Uh, my wife, the lovely CJD, has stitched a, a little cross stitch piece and it's a gift for someone that we both know and love. And so that will actually be framed in here. Um, she wanted to have a frame that would have a five inch by five inch opening. So you can see this is a square frame. Uh, even though um, I scan, it's a little bit crooked. Uh, it's going to be a pretty simple frame. Um, actually, what's neat about it is not only will there be the handmade gift that goes inside of it, the frame itself then will be handmade. And it's going to be made from wood that came from the farm in Iowa, which will be also meaningful. Uh, for the, the person receiving the gift. So essentially it's going to be a seven and a half inch by seven and a half inch square frame. So that's an inch and a quarter uh, actual frame pieces here. And um, this is the black walnut that uh, that I've got milled up and ready to be to be cut. And that my neighbor's gonna help me cut um, with a bit more precision on his table saw. On the inside, this would be like the front side that you're looking at here in the plan. On the inside of that, I'll get my little trim router out. I'll put a rabbit bit in it and I'll cut a quarter inch, maybe a three eighths inch um, rabbit inside of that. That allows us to put, um, I don't know if we're going to do glass or not, but we'll be able to put glass or at least the uh, matted uh, piece that's going to be stretched uh, down inside of there and then put some kind of a backing on it to hold it in place. Uh, in the frame and it'll be flush uh, then on the back of the frame as well so that it will hang nicely on the wall. Um, you can see that basically I'm going to use my miter box. I've got a little cheap little miter box that I'm going to use uh, to cut the 45 degree angles here so that I can glue this frame together uh, on the corners and so that it will uh, be square. And um, yeah, that's essentially it right here. It's a pretty simple design and I think though it'll, the meaningfulness of it will not be in the ornateness necessarily of the frame or even of the piece that's going to be framed, but by the fact that um, the person that we're making this for is going to really appreciate having a, a handmade gift and a handmade frame uh, and everything to, to put that, that cross stitch piece in and uh, where the materials come from, all of that will be uh, where the meaning and significance of the gift will will come from or at least it will contribute to it so that's it right there and i guess now we'll be ready to get into it all right i have my neighbor um who is really fantastic help he got out his table saw and he took that piece of black walnut that i had and uh, he cut this into where i have inch and a quarter uh, strips here so um, I'll need to sand each of these pieces up and then probably what I'll do next is go ahead and cut the the rabbit um, in the back side of these and then I'll do the mitering uh, I guess it'd be like this to get that uh, corner joints glued up and things like that this is basically the five by five size that we're gonna have the piece of uh, of stitch work um, kind of fastened into so I'll get that done I need to also then sand these pieces uh, clean them up a little bit. There are some burn marks on uh, the edges of this. I mean, this one's probably one of the worst ones. This is super hard wood, and so the the table saw was really struggling to get through it. Um, the rest of these, 
you know, not too bad. Um, so, you know, like for example, just a few here, but that stuff will all sand off. That's not a big problem. Uh, and then I'll get it mitered and uh, glued together and we'll go from there. All right, I've got my pieces uh, cleaned up, sanded down a little bit more. Uh, now I'm ready to, actually I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is I've got the uh, rabbiting bit in my trim router here. So I'll probably go ahead and cut the rabbits first in these, I think anyways. And then I'll put them in the miter box, get them mitered. Uh, I've also seen it online where people have done the mitering first, glued everything up, and then did the rabbit uh, inside that frame once it was created. So I need to think about to see if that maybe is a better way to do it or not before I get started. Uh, man, that walnut just looks fantastic. Anyways, um, so that's kind of where we are at this stage. I'm ready to basically start routing and start cutting. I've got the rabbit cut in each of the boards, at least the piece, each of the pieces. You can see that it does make a mess, which I quite enjoy making messes. So here it is. The rabbit is cut in each one of these. Um, I'll square these up, of course, using the miter box. We'll glue those together, and uh, then we'll have all of those kind of forming the frame itself. So I guess the next step is the miter box clamped back down to the bench and then start cutting those and hope that everything works the way it's supposed to work. here and then I'll cut the other one here the other ones so that it'll just go like this those will get glued of course that rabbit will be on the correct side right but when I cut the other ones all right I got a couple of the pieces cut here so I thought I'd just kind of show you how things are lining up so far I'm um, using the miter box the miter box is cheap but it's working so uh, I've got my my two pieces here as you can see cut there are 45 degree angles on each end here so oops, I didn't mean to bump you there basically that will go together like that and we'll get glued like so let me uh, let me get you in a little closer Kind of hard to get lined up exactly. Wait. Sorry about the jiggle there. The lighting in here is also pretty bad, as you can tell. 
Um, but that's actually not too bad for that cheap little Stanley miter box. I feel pretty good about that actually. Let's set this third piece in here. So far, so good. Although, I've got to watch because uh, I'm a little bit worried that this last piece is going to be just a tad bit out. And so it won't be square. You can see I've got a little bit um, of a gap up here. So that's just because I got it set kind of crooked. So, one more cut and then we'll kind of see how it goes. It's not perfect. It's going to need a little bit of work and convincing to get these joints together. <laughs> There's a nice little gap there, but again, it's just because I got the tape on there crooked. That one actually sealed up pretty well. That one looks pretty good. And this one's not. So really, it's this kind of piece over here that's going to need to be uh, sort of fitted back in there. So I'm going to need to work on that just a little bit and see what I can do. What I may end up doing is actually kind of going ahead and taking this back apart, but maybe gluing these joints and then, uh, you know, keeping them, getting them taped up and then coming back and seeing about getting this into place. So, yeah, but you know what though, aside from having that in there crooked so that there's a gap, uh, when that's done, that's going to be pretty nice. There's the rabbited side. Yeah, I think it's just going to be a matter of just finagling it until it fits together. I've done all the measuring. It's seven and a half on the long side and five on the short side for every single one of those pieces. And a 45 degree angle on every single one of them. So it really just boils down to me getting them lined up correctly. Well, perhaps not surprisingly, I'm a little bit off uh, on my angle on at least one of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start gluing. Uh, I'm going to get a, this one. These two fit together great. And so this will be a great starting point. I'll get these glued up. And then I'll start um, getting in the other two. And then probably on the last one, I'm going to have to get out some sandpaper or something and uh, do a little bit of adjusting to make sure that it will fit. Uh, I've been working some with my little 90 degree uh, clamp and that's where I kind of figured out that it was off just a little bit. So I think I'll be able to get it and get it together, get it all sanded down, get everything shaped the way that it needs to be so that it's square uh, when I glue it. So I'm just going to start though with the two best fitting ones. These, these fit together perfectly 
and create a very nice uh, 90 degree corner there. So I'll start with that and uh, we'll go from there and probably uh, once I get all these kind of together I may may cut in with another segment here uh, of shaping that last piece to make sure that it kind of gets fit in there. Otherwise I'm going to get it all glued together and uh, I'll bring you back and show you what I've got. Just so you can kind of see how well this works I'll show it to you with my uh, square. That's, that is perfectly square for that piece. That's looking really good. So that first glue is going to be a good glue. And then we'll kind of go from there and get the rest of the pieces in. I'm going to, once I get all this together, then I'll come back, I'll sand all this and get all this extra glue and stuff off of here. And, uh, yeah, go from there. All right, so I am now gluing up the second one of these pieces. Well, pieces two and three. I've got this one already glued up from yesterday. This was a good glue. However, I can see when I set it like this, and I'll show you just in a second how this one's going to be a little bit off. This is a nice 90 here. This is actually a really nice 90 there. But look at this. When you set this on the MDF, you see that gap? So what that tells me is, if I can get a finger in here to point, yeah, it's a little bit uh, high. I need to take some off of the heel of that back here, just a little bit with some sandpaper in order to kind of bring that a little bit more into level. This side over here, flat. Looks good. Not flat. Uh, I won't know until this is dry and I need to give that about 10 minutes because um, I'm using some 10 minute quick glue. So we'll see how it goes. I'll let you, I'll let you know. All right, so here's the frame, and I have to say it, you know, I'm not, I'm disappointed with the way that it turned out, you know, but we can, I think, fix whatever needs to be fixed. The joints actually are pretty smooth, right? There's a little bit of a ridge here, but here's the thing that bugs me. I've got a gap, and I've got a gap. So my plan is now is just to sand everything get it as smooth as possible, get rid of any ridges that I've got in the, the corners of these, also any excess glue that's dried on here, smooth all this out. Then I'm going to do the old um, sawdust and glue trick. I may actually go get some two-part epoxy that I can use because it tends, from what I've seen, it seems that when you make the uh, make your own filler, with um, epoxy and sawdust from this particular wood or any wood, uh, that it tends to take stain or oil a little bit better uh, and not look white. And that's the thing that that I've seen with people using wood glue. So I may I may try it with glue, wood glue, maybe on the back, and see what it looks like. Uh, but I'm gonna have to do something to fill this crack because I don't know. I'm just embarrassed by that. But anyways, so I'll fill that and. My plan is then to get this finished and actually uh, finish it with some uh, linseed oil to really bring out the, the the grains in this particular wood. This is, it's I don't know, maybe it's just hard to tell on camera, maybe you can tell, but it is great, great looking wood. So, it came from this, this stuff. So, I'll keep working on it and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to do uh, the filling and whatnot. <laughs> For now, I'm going to sand and sand, and when I'm done with that, I'll sand some more. All right, I'll have no idea really what you're going to be able to see with this, but I'm going to go ahead, actually, and uh, work on this crack using this uh, filler. Um, my, my filler piece that I was testing on is still not quite 100% dry. It is lighter, but uh, by the First off, this is a huge patch. I won't do anything nearly that large here. Uh, and second of all, when I sand all this down, um, it should should just basically leave whatever that is in that groove that I cut uh, to fill. I've also decided that I do have some special walnut uh, stain. So if that looks terribly light before I put on the oil, uh, linseed oil, I think is what I have. Um, I might just take a Q-tip or something and use that just to sort of rub onto where I fill in this crack. Now this is going to be a, a little bit of a pain. I was looking at it a little bit more closely and I cleaned this out a little bit. So 
it is a little bit wider of a gap than I thought initially. So basically I took a pick and uh, also a, a little razor blade. And um, I, I, I essentially kind of got little pieces of glue out of the way. I mean, this is glued pretty solid from about here down, so I'm not too worried about it. And actually, the back half of this is pretty well glued as well. So I'm going to take a toothpick. I'm going to actually try. Sorry if I hit my head on the camera. It's hanging above me here. Sorry about all the motion there. But I'm going to take this wood filler, and I'm going to try to do kind of like a caulking gun and get as much down in that crack as I can. I'll use a toothpick to sort of force it down in there as well. And then I'll let that dry. I'm going to have to do this in layers and sort of build it up. And this outer layer, I'll probably leave even a, a, a little bit extra sticking up uh, that I can sand down and match this and, and make this a smooth joint. So that's how I'm going to start here, and we'll just see how this goes. I don't know if it'll work or not, but we're going to try. And I also don't know what you're going to be able to see or not. Actually, that seems to be doing okay. So again, compared to my compared to my test piece, this is really pretty small, a really pretty small area to fill. <clears throat> I've done this before with a few pieces where I had some little hairline cracks and fractures and I used a toothpick to push the filler down in and it worked okay. I've also used um, oh like popsicle sticks and then um, for slightly larger cracks um, I've used of course uh, this is plastic little plastic piece uh, and that works pretty well. I don't tend to use metal um, because metal could potentially change the color. There's some kind of reaction in some metals with with filler that could potentially change the color of the filler and uh, I wasn't really interested in that so I am just uh, when I use a scraper like I just showed you. Um, I tend to use plastic. All right, this actually looks pretty good. So I'm just kind of pushing this down in here a little bit further. There will be, this will dry and shrink, right? This will shrink a little bit as it dries. So it may uh, have a little bit of a crack left in there. And that's okay. Because like I said, I'm going to do this in layers. And I'll just keep going until... The crack is full, and I want to try to get it down in this groove as much as possible, because if I don't, it may just dry, shrink, crack, and you'd end up with basically another crack here instead of, of having it filled. All right. That, I think, is going to do enough for round one. And... Uh, So, you can tell it's already starting to dry here, and you can see it's kind of light, maybe you can anyways, um, kind of where it's drying, it's turning a, a lighter color, see, and that's fine. And even if it's over here on an area where I'm not filling anything, that's fine too, because that'll all sand out. Uh, there we go. Uh, I also did off camera a little this little corner here as well. You can kind of see perhaps where that little lighter line is right in the corner. Just there was a tiny little gap. And I mean it just barely took the very tip of a toothpick to fill that. So uh and you can see it's kind of lighter too. So um when all this dries, of course, it'll get sanded, sanded again probably. So everything is smooth and then uh, what I may do, like I said, is if it looks like it's not going to take, if if my test piece won't take the oil and darken up like I'd like it to, like the rest of the wood around it, I may just take a Q-tip and put just a touch of this uh, special walnut 
uh, stain on there just to make sure it gets dark. This is an oil-based stain, and so uh, then I'll put the linseed oil on top of that and hope for the best. Again, you know, this is a gift for, for somebody that I'll probably reveal it eventually who it is, but it's someone who uh, we know and love and who knows and loves us, and the fact that this is handmade and whatnot, uh, and that this wood came from the farm in Iowa is going to be what makes it the most meaningful thing anyways. And actually the person I know is going to appreciate having some of these other little hairline cracks that are just natural part of this wood. And so, yeah, I'm excited about getting this project finished up and, and giving it to them. All right. I'm going to let that dry and then I'll come back after a while and put, as I need to put another uh, layer of this on here and we'll see how it goes. Well, I don't know if you can tell that angle right there. You can probably tell. That doesn't look too great. Now, again, um, this is a pretty massive, you know, that's a saw blade. That's the kerf of a saw. And some other scratches I made with a pick that it didn't, yeah, they just didn't fill very well. And then what I did is once that was sanded, I actually uh, put some oil on it. And just to kind of see how that filler might work on oil. And honestly... Not great. Uh, I also put a touch of stain on one piece of it too, but it was after I oiled it, so it's really not a good test. Then I actually just stained the backside of this scrap with the uh, special walnut. Sorry, let me get the English for you. And um, I'm actually, uh, I think I'm going to actually stain the frame. I don't think I'm going to oil it. I think I'm going to stain it. Uh, my plan was to use boiled linseed oil, which looks great on this stuff, but uh, that stain actually looks fantastic on this wood, so I think I may have just changed my mind. All right, so let me give you the latest update. I think I'm basically ready to finish this. So here's my corner that we worked on. You can see that it's, you know, it's got that lighter. <laughs> I still see little pieces every now and again. Every time I look at it and the light changes a little bit, I think I could do better. Uh, anyways, I've got, sorry, I've got this corner filled and uh, sanded. You can see on the front, you can see there's going to be a little bit that's seen there. What's interesting to me, though, is that like this is just a natural part of the wood and that's that's sanded it's cleaned up i mean i could sand on that for days and get that smoothed down but i kind of like to have the little little bits of rough pieces in it that's all part in the wood that's in there um in some ways the color of that filler sort of matches some of the other distressed pieces on the wood so i kind of like that like this right here is where a bug uh was was in it at one point in time i guess and you know, did a little, did what bugs do. Um, I'm just going to leave that. So I think we'll dress that up and make it look cool. So anyways, my plan here is uh, instead of putting the linseed oil on it, I think I've actually made the executive decision to go ahead and just use the special walnut uh, stain on the entire thing. So that's my plan. So I'm going to go... I'm going to probably, I've, I've, I've sanded in here, but on these inner pieces about as much as I can. I may do a little bit more. This is like a 400 grit or something. I've done 120, 220, uh, which is probably good enough, but I've just been, you know, it's, it's kind of end grain type in here, so not going to be completely perfect, but We'll get it as good as we can. And uh, I'll wipe this down again with my tack cloth. Um, I'm not going to be super concerned about the back side of this down on the rabbit, right? Because that won't ever be seen, except for when we're mounting something in there. Um, so it's clean. I did sand it some, but not, 
I didn't spend hours on it. But I'm going to begin with staining the back side of this. Uh, and then we'll see how everything looks. And then once it's a little bit better, I'll move it back over here to the front. And we'll stain that as well. And we'll see how this turns out. Stained this frame, it's not quite dry yet. Shouldn't take too long, but let's take a look at it. Oh man, I think that looks fantastic. So the corners can't really see the putty at all or the uh, filler at all, so that's awesome. On the back side, you can see the rabbit. It's a little bit rougher on the corners on the back, but like I said, it won't be seen because it'll be up against the wall. <laughs> and of course, down in the rabbit won't be seen except for by anybody who may be mounting whatever piece goes in here. You know? But man, the front of this looks great. So I'm going to just kind of hang this back where I had it. Got a little clamp here. Oops. There you go. And uh, just let that sit and dry for a bit. Or hang and dry, as the case may be. And uh, then we'll move on to finishing this project all together. I'll get hardware to hang, for hanging and all that kind of thing uh, put into this as well. So I'm really pleased. Also, you'll notice, I didn't mention this before. Uh, my plan was going to be to use my router to put a little rounded edge on the outside of this. Well, actually I took a pole, my wife and my daughter, and they said, no, leave it as it is. And so that's what we've done. 
All right, this has had some time to dry now, so I'll just kind of brought, come back out to uh, take a, a quick peek at it here. Uh, put it over on some, some red oak plywood so you can kind of see the contrast, see the color a little bit more perhaps. Um, I really like how this has turned out. Um, it looks really pretty doggone good. So there's the back side of this. Um, Let's see if I can get you in a little closer even to see some of the the grains. The lighting in, in the garage today is not great. Yeah. I don't know how, how well you can see that, but oh man, that just in in IRL, <laughs> in real life, this just looks fantastic. So I'm actually quite pleased with how this turned out. Corners look great. I mean, you can see the joins, but I mean, they're, they're, you can see that on any frame. So I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with this. So I think that'll do it for this video. And in the next one, we'll maybe, uh, see about showing you the final product. And, uh, if I can convince my wife to, to actually uh, record the process of putting the uh, cross stitch onto the, you know, stretching it onto its board and then mounting it in the back of this frame, then uh, we'll do that. Otherwise, if she's not interested in recording a video of that, uh, I'll bring you back when this is all done. I'll also uh, mount the hanging hardware, probably put a couple of little feet, you know, kind of rubber feet or felt feet on the bottom of that. So then when it hangs on the wall, it kind of hangs, you know, level. It doesn't um, pitch out at the top and uh, yeah so we'll bring you back at some point along the way and make sure that you see the final product before we ship it off to the person that we are gifting this to so love to hear what you think about it uh, so far and so you can kind of stick it down in the comments what you think and uh, again once we have it kind of all the way completed you'll be able to see uh, how the final product looks so we'll see you in the next one